Hello there, and welcome to this lesson on working with length. In the world we live in, we rely heavily on measuring almost everything around us. Measurements are important in helping us to make sense of the world and to relate to the world in a way that can be described to others in a concrete manner. The accuracy of any measurement depends on the instrument used to take the measurement. Larger objects should be measured using larger tools with larger units of measure. Smaller objects should be measured with smaller units of measure. An odometer measures the kilometers traveled in a vehicle. A trundle wheel is pushed along a surface to measure distances in meters. A tape measure or a meter ruler is useful for measuring the height of a person correct to the nearest centimeter. A biologist will need to make detailed measurements when classifying insects and needs a ruler with far smaller units of measure. This is so they can find the exact length of the species they are studying. A micrometer can measure the length of a small insect to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. In South Africa, we use the metric system of measurement. Let's look at some of the main relationships between the different units of length. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. One meter equals 100 centimeters. One kilometer equals 1,000 meters. It is important to remember these conversions and to be able to use them in calculations. Let's try a simple conversion calculation. How many meters are there in 2,3 kilometers? We know that a kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Therefore, we multiply 2,3 by 1,000, which equals 2,300 meters. So far, these examples have been pretty simple. More complicated questions will ask us to find the surface area of spaces and to then calculate the cost of painting or tiling the area. Let's try a question like this. A room is 4,5 meters wide and 5,4 meters in length. If a tile is 50 by 50 centimeters in size, calculate the number of tiles needed to cover the floor. To calculate the number of tiles in a row, we divide the width of the room, which is 4,5 meters, by the width of the tile, which is 0,5 meters. This gives us an answer of nine tiles in one row. Did you notice that we converted the 50 centimeter units to 0,5 meters? We can only do calculations with values that have the same units of measure. This means both must be measured either in meters or centimeters. To find the number of tiles it takes to cross the length, we divide the length of 5,4 by 0,5. This gives an answer of 10,8 tiles. Since tiles only come in whole numbers, we must round up to 11 tiles. To calculate the number of tiles we need, we multiply 9 by 11, which equals 99 tiles. Let's extend this problem by adding in a cost factor. The tiles are sold in boxes of 30 tiles. A box costs 400 rand. How much would we pay to cover the floor? We first need to calculate how many boxes we should buy. We needed 99 tiles to cover the floor. As there are 30 tiles in a box, we divide the 99 by 30, which gives us an answer of 3,3 boxes. Now, since we can only have a whole number of boxes, we must round up to four boxes. Four times 400 Rand gives a total cost of 1,600 Rand. This brings us to the end of this lesson. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Using Measurement Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about measurement on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.